Hello, good morning everyone. Welcome once again to Kapetira. Our week is about to end. But we praise the Lord for seeing us through, di ba? Bilis ng oras. You know, yesterday we talked about, uh, we touched on the topic of gratefulness. No? And we talked about how easy it is to be unfaithful to the Lord if we are ungrateful. And and uh, the opposite is all really true. No, it, It's really hard to... Um, to forsake the Lord and to be unfaithful to Him when we are grateful to Him, just like Polycarp. I want to I wanna go back to that topic today and really emphasize it and spend a little bit more time talking about gratefulness to the Lord. Uh, I hope your coffee is hot. I hope you're ready to study the Word of the Lord. Before we do that, let's join our hearts in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank You. We thank You today. We thank you for your faithfulness to us this whole week. Thank you for seeing us through. Thank you, Lord, for your compassions that never fail. So, Lord, help us to be grateful today. Help us to see you with fresh eyes, with your fresh mercies, Lord. And as we devote our study to you today, Lord, would you open our hearts and our minds to take heed of your word and be changed by it. Holy Spirit, have your way in us. We are scattered, but we are gathered in your presence at this moment. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to go back to that passage we read yesterday. Uh, Ephesians, uh, no, sorry, Revelation 2.10. Um, the last part of verse 10. It says, Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Revelation 2.10. The last line, Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. You know, you know that 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 line, crown of life. It's it's really a, a rich phrase, no, and um, it appears multiple times in the Bible, and in in the in the times that it comes out, it um, it comes out with the context of persevering under trial. Uh, for example, James one twelve says, "Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, there it is, he will receive the crown of life." which God has promised to those who love him. And so that's that seems to be the case, no? The the the, the Bible is admonishing us to be faithful, to be steadfast and persevere through various kinds of trials because at the end we will receive the crown of life. To a certain degree growing up, I I, I got that that um we should persevere um through various trials but i had the hard time wrapping my mind around the concept of receiving a crown of life um and i know i have i've been in conversation with some of you and uh, this question had been um directed towards me more than a few times that um hindi lang pala ako no so multiple people uh, have been struggling with that Specifically, uh, with the question, di ba in heaven, in in heaven, our reward is Jesus, and uh, you know, in heaven, there's really no point in accumulating riches, di ba? It's not as if that I can gloat towards my me- my neighbor or I can be I can show off all of these crowns and just you know, and, and just parade in heaven because that would be sinful, no? Um, Will will there be slums in heaven where people would just you know don't have crowns live and I would be living in a bigger mansion and so I I had a hard time wrapping my mind around uh, the concept of those crowns and um, yeah I I know that I have to persevere under trial but I just found it I I was not really motivated to earn that crown diba right? Why would I be motivated to earn that crown? I wanted to be humble before the Lord. So I, I don't know if that makes sense to you uh, this morning. And so I, I want to come come here and hopefully encourage you to pursue that crown of life that the Lord Jesus Christ is promising to those who are enduring um, under severe trial. So let me let me show you a picture. Uh, this is a picture of one of the um, one of the special days in my life, which happens also to be one of the most awkward days in my life. Uh, this was my ordination day, ordination night. Um, 
Ordination is when a, when a church recognizes a pastor's call to the ministry. So normally, uh, a pastor that's ordained goes through a certain process. No, they uh, they write a, a, a paper about their statement of faith, about their theological beliefs, their philosophy of ministry, and, and their, their personal testimony of salvation and conversion. Again. And um, they come to a panel and at least in our denomination and you defend that paper and it's like a board exam and then that's a usual uh, use useful gauge uh, for them to spot okay is this person really uh, gifted is this person really called by the lord to shepherd a flock and so i went through this process uh, a few years back um with the uh, core team members of GCF Makati and also um, representatives from the Conservative Baptist Association of the Philippines. And uh, by the grace of God, this night happened. Um, it confirmed my call to the ministry. I'm really grateful uh, for that. And I, and I praise the Lord for the opportunity to serve Him. But then I, I really found it awkward because uh, uh, people who know me um, know that I'm very introverted. I don't do well when the attention is on me. In fact, um, I don't like celebrating my birthday. You know, I feel really awkward when people throw me a party and saying nice things to me i feel really awkward being the center of attention so so this night when when i got ordained I, they made me wear the the stole and you know i i was center of attention every day i felt really awkward and i felt like you know um yeah is there really any purpose to this uh you know can you just give me my certificate and just pray over me privately and let, let's not just do this anymore so i was struggling with that and then uh, there was a point in the ceremony where where they gave me the the plaque uh, my ordination document no and um, after I received that they asked me to respond to to, to the whole congregation that was gathered there to to join in celebration for my ordination and uh, and as I, I received the the certificate of ordination I, I looked at the crowd and I, I saw very significant people in my life namely my dad and my mom and so happened during this ordination my dad was sitting up front because he was the speaker actually uh, during my ordination and he was the actually one of the people who had granted me those papers um, and he was there and I was looking at him in fact if you look at the picture he's right there in front praying over me and Pam um, and, and and I was just so filled with emotion that after I received that that certificate, I went up to him and, and I just offered it to my dad and I said, Sir, this is yours. This is not mine. This is a product of your hard work in my life, the way you have discipled me, that you have cared for me, and how you and Mama modeled the Christian life for me. Salamat para sa iyo itong ordination na to. Hindi to para sa akin. Also remember writing the... The, the the ordination papers and and just feeling emotion me and uh, I wrote a dedication and I dedicated it to my grandma si Nanay. Um she has a uh, um, dementia right now and she can't remember much but then I just wrote an inscription there that the heart remembers what the mind forget and I just offered that to my grandma because you know what uh, she was the one who really, she and my, my aunt, they really supported me when I was studying. And the only reason why I am who I am today is because of my nanay and, and my parents would really work hard and invested in my life so that I would really love the Lord and, and uh, serve Him like I'm doing now. And whatever I am now is a testimony to their ministry in my life. And I was just so overcome with gratefulness to them and... Uh, and so this accolade, so this is my point, this accolade that I received, I felt awkward receiving it to myself, but I'm grateful that I received it, ironically, from my dad, so that I can give it back to my dad. And so I, I'm, I'm thinking about those crowns, the crown of life that, that would be given to those who persevere. Now think about that in that frame of thought. 
and listen to this passage from the book of Revelation also. Revelation 4, 9 to 11. Uh, we will get more into this in, in, in the coming weeks. No? But this is what it says. It says, And whenever the living creatures gave glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. Notice this. They cast their crowns before the throne saying worthy are you O Lord and God to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they existed and were created so, so this imagery here so there are these elders in heaven and normally elders are human titles right um, in our church we have elders um, back in the time of the ancient Israelite they had elders within their tribes um, even in the early church they had elders right these are people who shepherd uh, the congregation it's like pastors and so you, you see all of these people who serve the Lord these elders um, and they have crowns in their head and we just read that those crowns same book right those crowns come from really persevering under trials and they receive that crown from god and now they're 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 before the lamb and 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 worshiping god and and they're casting their crowns on jesus's feet and and they're singing jesus's glory and and i realize shocks i want to get a crown because i when i when i meet jesus i i want to give him something and just like that song goes, well, what can I give? What what can I give that you have not given? And what do I have that's not already yours? And then I think, the ba yung kanta? All we possess are these lives we're living, and that's what we give to you. And I think about that in the context of my ordination. I receive a certificate. To me, it's. It's nice, um, but I didn't feel it was necessary. But I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful because I have the opportunity to be at that moment that that my my crowning achievement, I can take that off of me, and I can lay that at the feet of my dad and my mom and my grandmother and my aunt and my church, in gratefulness, for all the they have contributed in my life you know what when I get to heaven and when I see Jesus face to face for the very first time and, and in view of all the things that he had given to me I don't want to go there empty handed like he has invested so much in me he's been really faithful to me I know he's been faithful to you I'd be really sad when I get to heaven and everybody's offering him something and I don't and I don't have anything to lay at his feet. And, and, and the Bible says I can have an opportunity to bring something at Jesus' feet by persevering under trial. Because if I persevere under trial, then I get a crown. I get a crown from him. And if I get this crown from him, I can lay this at his feet and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. And that gives new perspective in how we're supposed to go through trials. I don't want to go through trials now begrudgingly, just thinking, oh, I have to go through this. Grabe, what an inconvenience. No, I want to go through this with joy, like writing that paper in my ordination or going through that ceremony. is awkward to me. But I want to go through this because I want to thank you. I want to lay something at you. I'm I'm doing this because I don't I can't afford I cannot give you anything that you don't have but I want to live my life for you so that when I meet you I I have something to give you I know it's not much but it's something in light of everything that you have done for me I want to be grateful to you so so when you get to heaven wouldn't you want something to be able to give to the Lord as a token of gratefulness so I only have one question for you today, really to introspect, no no fancy acronyms, not today. 
But I just want to leave this question with you today. The question is, how do you want to express your gratitude to Jesus when you meet him for the first time in heaven? How do you want to express your gratitude to Jesus when you meet him for the first time in heaven? Think about that and work on it today by enduring. Whatever the Lord is calling you to endure, endure it. Because if you do, the promise is you'll have the crown of life. And you can thank Jesus with that crown of life when you see him in heaven. I pray that when we get to heaven, we have something to give him. It's not for ourselves. It's just because he's so good to us. So faithful. I pray that that motivates your day. Not just your day, your life. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Help us to be grateful to you, Lord, and not to be so self-centered even as we go through these trials. See, we can go through trials, Lord, and just think about how inconvenienced we are and how harassed we are. But apparently, Lord, even going through a pandemic, if we go through this well, if we suffer well, you would, re you would give us a crown of life. And I want to receive that crown of life so I can give it back to you. I have cast many crowns on your feet. What you give me, I bring back to you because you're worthy of it. And I really want to thank you. I really want to thank you. For what you're doing in my life and how faithful you are and i pray lord that you would just teach us you give us an appetite for gratefulness and just thank you in every way that we can it will never match what you have done for us on calvary it's not even an adequate receipt of your payment but i really want to be grateful to you i hope that everyone would really want to be grateful to you so help us to endure. Help us to endure, Lord. We are so grateful for what you have done for us. We love you, Lord. Commit to you our day and our week and our weekend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hope your coffee is still hot. I'll see you again.